Hey, friends! After revisiting the Neptune Factor, I decided to take another look at some underwater sci-fi action. So this time, we're talking about 1965's War Gods of the Deep, also known as City Under the Sea or City in the Sea. This was the last film directed by the legendary Jacques Turner. Our story goes like this. The year is 1903, and in Cornwall there's this here lonely seaside mansion. A dead dude winds up on the beach, but no one knows how he got there. He was a lawyer who was staying up at the mansion. American Ben Harris goes to the mansion to tell the lady of the house, a beautiful fellow American, that they found the dead dude. Our hero is hanging around when he's attacked by a weird figure, and later the chick is chicknapped by this creature. Ben and another resident, Harold, and Harold's pet chicken, discover a secret passage that leads to an underground cavern. This leads them to an undersea cavern, after they stupidly fall into a whirlpool, where they discover an ancient temple complex and a band of smugglers. Now these smuggler guys have discovered a secret, the secret of eternal life. Turns out the men are really a hundred years old. The only catch is, if they return to the surface, they'll croak, because once out of the caverns, they'll age in minutes. Now the leader of this bunch is a no good Nick called the Captain, who was a notorious smuggler back in his day. Turns out there's an underwater city nearby where these gill men hang out and believe the Captain is a god. Unfortunately, there's a volcano that is threatening to erupt and things are getting worse and worse as stronger and stronger tremors hit the caverns. The captain chicknapped the chick since she looks just like his long dead wife. Anyway, our heroes try to escape the madman with the chick before the volcano destroys the undersea world. Can our heroes escape? Will the captain be triumphant and these kill men? What the hell? In our cast, we have Vincent Price as the captain and the villain of the piece. Who doesn't love Vincent Price? Tab Hunter is here as the leading man hero. Meh. Uh, he, he was never really action hero material, if you ask me. Well, he was an okay actor. He lacked the gravitas to pull off a leading man part convincingly. He's doing his best here, I guess. He's trying. Sort of in the same way a soggy slice of bread does. It tries to hold your sandwich together while you eat it, but it never quite manages the attempt. Susan Hart is the love interest Jill Tregellis. She had a short but interesting career straight out of high school. She started in TV, her first gig appearing alongside Steve Allen. And besides this picture, between 1964 and 1966, she appeared in several of the Beach Party movies and Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine, that one also with Vincent Price. She married the president of American International Pictures and when he died, she took over the company and completed some films already in production, such as 1973's The Legend of Hell House. She was also a singer and recorded a country song in 1981 called Is This a Disco or a Honky Tonk? <laughs> she went on to be very active in charity work. We have John Le Mezier as a preacher trapped for years with the smugglers. We last saw him in 1978's Who is Killing the Great Chefs of Europe, among many other things. He was a regular on the British comedy show Dad's Army. Finally, we have David Tomlinson, who plays the chicken-owning sidekick Harold. This character is one that was forced on the production in order to add humor to the film, and that's the biggest mistake here. The humor doesn't work and only serves to mute any tension they try to build. The character does have some good points, and the actor is fine, but the pet chicken thing is just dopey as all hell. 
And part of the trouble with this guy and his chicken is that it feels very Disney-ish. It just has that Disney vibe, the type of thing that add to a Disney picture to make it more of a family-friendly movie. Tomlinson appeared in several Disney films like Mary Poppins and The Love Bug, further adding to that Disney vibe the picture suffers from. But this is supposed to be a sci-fi action horror thing, so the dopey chicken gets old fast and you wish they had abandoned the idea. Tomlinson is fine, but the pet chicken thing is pretty dopey. Wisely, the original producer walked out when the powers that be insisted on adding the comic relief, and another producer stepped in. Some things don't make much sense here, like several times our heroes ask the captain questions, and the captain tells our heroes they are there to answer questions, not to ask them. But th then he just straight up answers their questions anyway. <laughs> Every time! <laughs> And, and, and a man turns traitor, and while we're told his fate, we never get to see it. And there's only like 20 of these pirates, and the captain cheerfully kills them off, so sooner or later he's gonna run out of followers, right? Uh, there's a lot of repetitive running about, only to have the captain and his henchmen show up and put our heroes back in the cave they're being held in. They never put a guard on our heroes, so they just try to get away again. And... There's a tediously long undersea chase where our heroes are trying to reach a point where they're supposed to be safe, only to wind up right back where they start. The movie was loosely based on a poem called The City in the Sea, written by Edgar Allan Poe in 1845. It was meant to cash in on the other Poe-based movies from the decade, all of which star Vincent Price. Price was a big fan of Poe, and here he reads a few lines from the poem. However, uh, that's about the only thing connecting this mess to Poe, since they changed just about everything else. There are some good effects, like the sunken city and the temple set, but most of the special effects of the power station and all that were culled from the Japanese science fiction film A Dragon and look out of place. The Gill men are pretty bad too. They're not convincing, and it's painfully obvious that these are just men in regular scuba gear under the costumes which were pretty flimsy and easily torn. War Gods of the Deep is a mashup of different ideas and concepts, few of which really coalesce together. In his last outing, Tornor does what he can. Some of the movie works well. The retro Jules Verne motif is interesting and could have been a real winner, but in the end, War Gods of the Deep comes off as a low-tier kid stuff Disney picture. As it is, the picture is kind of middling. Not god-awful, but not really great, and not as good as it could have been. So I'm giving War Gods of the Deep a half-hearted two pawns. This one is alright for kids, and a weekend movie type of time passer. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one!